Can you imagine having a job in which there is no accountability for what you are doing? And then imagine that you have not been accountable to anyone for over 14 years. Finally, after all that time, you meet with the administration and you're not there to get either accolade or learning, but primarily without any excuses to simply report on what you have been doing. That's the reality that Paul describes in that first reading today. What makes it so amazing is putting his visit to the apostles in Jerusalem in the context of the massive hierarchical structure of the church 2,000 years later. Paul was unencumbered with canon law or periodic synods like the special one on the family going on in Rome this week and next. Paul just knew who he was and what he was doing. His credentials and his confidence were the Holy Spirit, whose revelation prompted him to visit Jerusalem, and then once there in the midst of the leadership to forcefully challenge any idea that the Gentiles would be excluded from the good news of Jesus Christ. It wasn't going to happen, particularly since he had been converting them for over 17 years. Paul proclaimed by his life the responsorial psalm for today. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Thanks to his courage, determination, and persistence, you and I know Jesus Christ today. And it's not a small thing. It's a great thing. It's a graced thing. And today we might want to take a few minutes to thank God for the gift that we Gentiles have received. At our baptism, Jesus Christ came into our life and promised that he would be with us forever. We are never alone in the best of the good times and the worst of the negative times. In that powerful relationship with our Savior, we are called to strengthen our faith, hope, and love and to live it daily in our lives. Is it easy? No. Not in today's world as organized religions face apathy and diminished participation. Not in today's world when religion is discouraged and a nebulous spirituality is affirmed. The problem is that a personal spirituality is devoid of community, missing the other to help guide and support us. A personal, non-community faith is dependent on self and on one's self-definition. There is no Our Father. There is no need to be given daily bread. No openness to be forgiven our sins or a willingness to need to forgive others. There's little challenge when it comes only from within. There's no standard, no test, no evaluative criteria for living our daily life. But like Paul and the apostles and disciples and all countless saints and sinners for 2,000 years, we have Jesus Christ. We know Jesus and Jesus knows us. His love is everlasting. He, with the Father and the Spirit, leads us not into temptation, but delivers us, us, the community, from evil. Thank you for being the community of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the community of your prayers at each liturgy. It's great to know that we are praying with and for one another. It gives great comfort knowing that we are not alone. God bless us all in the body of the Christ and in our church.